Hello everyone, what I bring to you today is the Tai BL drama Why Destiny. This is a TV series that is a little different from the previous ones, telling the stories of several outrageous and sweet CPs. Without further ado, let's get into the story of the first couple. As the new semester begins, the most lively activities are club activities. The exciting boxing match is deeply loved by the majority of men. In this match, Tullius won the opponent very beautifully. After the fight, Tullius told his trainer, Gibson, that he wanted to teach others how to box. Although he was reluctant to retire such an excellent boxer as Tullius, he couldn't force it either. So he agreed to Tullius' request and started as a teaching assistant. The next day, the boxing club started busy recruiting new things. Tullius boxing is quite famous in the school, so there are unexpectedly many people who come to sign up. Just when Tullius was about to end today's appointment, Gerd came. Although Gerd wanted Tullius to agree to join the club, his angry expression seemed to be making trouble no matter how he looked at it. It turned out that the two disliked each other as early as the first time they met. Tullius firmly disagreed with Gerd's joining the boxing club, and there was a lot of gunpowder between the two. In the end, Gibson came forward to mediate and let Gerd join the boxing club. After accepting Exion, the boxing club soon ushered in his first outing training activity. Tullius named the meeting point. Gerd did not show up for a long time. Just when Tullius thought Gerd would not come, Gerd appeared again. But the words were not speculative, and after a fierce quarrel, the two finally calmed down. Next, training is about to begin. Tullius sent out the training schedule to everyone except Gerd. Gibson took Tullius aside and taught him that as a coach, he must establish a good relationship with the players to ensure the efficiency of the training. After several days of training, Tullius always wanted to pick Gerd as thorns, but Gerd always used the excuse of feeling unwell to avoid training. Tullius finally couldn't take it anymore, went to Gerd's room and found a plant that could fake a fever. Tullius was so angry that he almost punched Gerd, but reason prevailed in the end. Tullius told Gibson about Gerd's behavior, and Gerd kept apologizing to Gibson. Gibson agreed to let Gerd stay in the boxing club for the sake of Gerd sincerely correcting his mistakes. But Gibson naturally refused to let Gerd go easily, so he sent Tullius to live with Gerd. As soon as this remark came out, both of them were very surprised. After all, they had always disliked each other. In the evening, according to Gibson's arrangement, Tullius came to Gerd's room with his things. The first thing they did when they met was naturally to quarrel. But the two quarreled and quarreled. Why were they so close? The two finally went to bed, but Gerd was still addicted to the game and couldn't extricate himself. Tullius stepped forward and snatched the phone. Gerd made a gesture to punch Tullius, but accidentally pinned Tullius on the bed. Howdy! This ambiguous posture made Gerd suddenly lost his temper and obediently lay back on his bed and went to sleep. The next morning, Tullius impatiently woke Gerd up. As a result, when Gerd turned over, one of them lost his footing and fell directly onto Gerd's mouth. The good morning kiss was caught off guard, and Tullius immediately blushed and ran out. <laughs> Gerd followed Tullius out as well. After the embarrassment just now, the relationship between the two is not as rigid as before. The two were together for the first time, chatting calmly. At this time, Gerd saw the cockroaches on the ground, screamed and hugged Tullius. <laughs> Tullius, who was suddenly hugged, not only didn't push away, but started to comfort Gerd instead. This gnawing Gerd was actually afraid of bugs. Thinking of this, the corners of Tullius' mouth rose unconsciously. The training continued as usual, but today Tullius was extra gentle with Gerd. In training, he also took good care of Gerd. The reason for this is that only the two of them know in their hearts. Tullius, who usually gets up early, couldn't get up, and Gerd found out that Tullius had a fever. He frantically tended to Tullius. After drinking the medicine, Gerd was a little bit reluctant to leave for training, but he was still absent-minded during the training. After a day of practice, Gibson arranged for Gerd to take Tullius to the hospital. The two rode their bicycles together, moving forward under the setting sun. Tullius seemed to forget his physical discomfort and hugged Gerd's waist tightly. Perhaps because of his illness, Gerd was extra gentle with Tullius. Hey, come with 
That night, Gerd touched Tullius's face and told Tullius the taboos during his illness, but his body gradually moved closer. Just when the two were about to kiss, Tullius suddenly moved his face away. He was worried that his illness would infect Gerd. However, the stubborn Gerd still kissed him with an expression of enjoyment on his face. In the middle of the night, Gerd noticed that Tullius' body temperature started to rise again, so he hurriedly took a basin of cold water to wipe Tullius' body to cool down. Sure enough, the Thai body rub is really amazing. When he awoke, Tullius was restored to health. Gerd was going to train, and unlike usual, this time Tullius gave him a phone watch, so that Tullius could keep track of Gerd's whereabouts. Gerd bid farewell to Tullius dotingly, and Tullius showed a shy expression on his face. It really makes people wonder who is the senior. Lying in bed with nothing to do, Tullius began his own plan of harassment. Gerd was running. He got a call from Tullius. Knowing that the other party was making trouble, Gerd still patiently chatted with Tullius. Without saying a word, the lovely couple began to joke. Early in the morning, it made Tullius extremely shy. At noon, Gerd specially brought lunch and enjoyed it with Tullius. Gerd mentioned something about Gibson wanting to send him to the game, sparking a discussion between the two. Tullius proposed to let Gerd turn on the video during training so that Tullius could guide him. Gerd happily agreed. When it was time to go to bed, Gerd was still playing the game happily. Gerd is more conscious now, and when the time comes, he takes the initiative to hand over the mobile phone to Tullius, and also acts like a baby before going to bed, asking to kiss Tullius. I never imagined that Gerd would look like this after being tempted. In the middle of the night, Tullius was so itchy that he couldn't sleep because of the acne. Seeing his sweetheart like this, Gerd naturally couldn't sleep well. Although he couldn't scratch Tullius' back for fear of scars on Tullius' back, Gerd could blow it. Just like that, Gerd quickly came behind Tullius and started to relieve Tullius' itching. It's just that the coolness coming from behind made Tullius feel strangely comfortable. Afraid that he couldn't stand it, Tullius quickly stopped Gerd. That friend is right in front of him, but it feels like he can't eat it, which really makes Gerd worry. When it was time to take the medicine, Gerd gently lifted the weak Tullius, held him in his arms, and coaxed Tullius to take the medicine like a child. Gerd looked at the person on the bed worriedly, and fell asleep sitting on the edge of Tullius' bed. Gerd trains as usual, and so does Tullius, calling him when he's running. The two made rapid progress, and it seemed that every time they chatted, there were endless sweet words. Despite Gerd's company, Tullius felt bored after spending so much time in the room. To make Tullius happy, Gerd decides to sneak him out for a while. Although Tullius was very nervous and thought that he should not make this mistake as a teaching assistant, he still couldn't bear to spend the sweet time with Gerd. The two were outside blowing the wind and chatting. Feeling that Tullius was a bit cold, Gerd took off his coat and put it on Tullius, and hugged Tullius' waist. Just when the two were complacent because they hadn't been discovered, they opened the door and saw Gibson who had been waiting for a long time. The two who were caught walked up to Gibson dejectedly, ready to receive a scolding meal. To their surprise, although Gibson criticized them fiercely, he still didn't have the heart to punish them severely. After Gibson left, the two finally breathed a sigh of relief. Next, the two began their frantic copying work. Gibson is not difficult, but it is also time-consuming. The two of them didn't finish the punishment until their hands were sore. The two looked at each other and smiled, shaking their heads helplessly. After finally going out once and being caught, this luck is no one. The club selection day finally came, and Gerd sat nervously. Tullius could see his state. Tullius stepped forward and hugged Gerd, stroking his back gently, comforting him. Under the comfort of Tullius, Gerd gradually calmed down and took part in the competition with confidence. After the game, Tullius saw Gerd's unhappy expression and thought he had lost the game. After careful questioning, I learned that Gerd was worrying about his feelings. After some ideological struggles, the two finally faced each other frankly and expressed their hearts to each other. Not surprisingly, they were sweetly together and became an official couple. Two weeks after becoming an official couple, Tullius recovered from his illness. The young couple finally completed the last step on a dark and stormy night. The two who once disliked each other never thought that they could spark a flame of love so quickly. It seems that love has nothing to do with the length of time, as long as you meet the right person.
Today we will officially enter another love story of a couple. This is a love story between a rich young master and a poor tutor. Beginning of the story originated from a game of gambling. Jason stared at the computer screen intently. His mood fluctuated with the team's wins and losses. In the end, Jason lost the bet. While Jason was frowning, his bad friend Barnett called. This look of schadenfreude is undoubtedly a true friend. Jason spent all his savings in this gambling and even lost his living expenses for the next month. Originally, he wanted to borrow money from Barnett, but Barnett suggested that Jason be self-reliant and threw Jason the tutor he had not arranged. Although Jason was very reluctant at first, under the temptation of money, Jason still chose to give in. Jason, who was still in bed, was woken up by Barnett. Reluctance was written all over his body, but under the threat of Barnett, Jason put on his clothes obediently and came to the reception place with Barnett. The two were very handsomely dressed. Jason was very curious about who the student he was going to teach was. Attracted by the mansion as soon as they entered the door, they were looking around. The two were invited to their seats and began a long wait. After waiting for three hours, the other party has not arrived yet. Jason, who had never been treated like this before, became irritable. Just as he was complaining to Barnett, Lewin, who had been absent for a long time, showed up. <laughs> Lewin made his debut in a sophisticated suit. Jason, whose patience has long been exhausted, has no time to admire Lewin's handsomeness. The first time he saw Lewin, he recognized Lewin as the one who groped and vomited on himself in the bar. Seeing Lewin and Barnett greet each other innocently, without apologizing at all, Jason was instantly very angry. He stood up straight away and yelled at Lewin, I won't teach anymore. Seeing his companion being so impulsive, Barnett immediately pulled Jason aside. After Barnett's tearful enlightenment, Jason sat back in front of Lewin again. But this time, it was Lewin who was dissatisfied. Lewin first questioned Jason's strength, and later said that Jason had a bad temper in short. He was very provocative. When Jason was about to break out, Lewin asked Barnett to return the money to himself and let Jason decide to stay. Lewin knew from Barnett's face that Barnett must not be back so Lewin had no choice but to say that he could reluctantly accept Jason's tutoring. For the sake of his friend's reputation, Jason could only agree. Once things were finalized, Barnett was called away. Lewin and Jason were left in New Odao's room, and the two people who didn't like each other faced each other. Jason asked Lewin what he wanted to teach, and Lewin said what he wanted, with a bunch of extra conditions attached. Jason is unhappy. In Lewin's territory, Jason is still very sensible. After Jason left, Lewin had a triumphant smile on his face. The next day, Jason came to Lewin's house as agreed. After a short wait, Lewin appeared in pajamas. Today, Lewin's tone was much calmer, and he even acted coquettishly with Jason from time to time. Seeing Lewin getting closer and closer, Jason suggested to him to change clothes first. It is so attractive that it is really not suitable for class. Lewin to listen to Jason, and took off his pajamas in front of Jason. That snow white upper body made Jason nervous for a moment. It took a while after Lewin left before Jason recovered. When Lewin appeared again, he hugged Jason directly from behind. Jason was quite frightened by Lewin's sudden movement and kept dodging. He chased him to escape, and he was unable to escape after all. In the end, Lewin seemed to be tired from playing, so he ended this funny meeting game. As soon as the two were done, Lewin gave Jason a tablet in the name of helping Jason study. Jason couldn't refuse, so he accepted it. Next, Lewin began to study quietly. When he encountered a problem that he didn't know, he asked Jason for advice. During the teaching process, Lewin and Jason got closer and closer, only a few millimeters away from turning their heads, and the two could kiss each other. <laughs> Looking at the instantly enlarged face in front of him, Jason stood up quickly, wanting to go to the toilet to calm down. The mischievous Lund is waiting around the corner, ready to scare Jason. Jason hugged Lund reflexively. Now, both of them were shocked. Being hugged suddenly, the always aggressive Lund also became incoherent. It was Jason who suggested to study, which relieved the embarrassment of the two of them. However, Lund didn't intend to study with Jason, but proposed an invitation to have dinner together. Under Lund's aggressive acting and the charm of money, Jason agreed. Next, it was time for dinner for the two of them. Seeing Jason's bewildered look at the food on the plate, Lund came to Jason 
ready to eliminate it for him. Accidentally, the food fell on Jason's body. Lauren quickly helped Jason clean up and apologized repeatedly, but Jason seemed annoyed anyway and left the table, leaving Lauren alone. Jason took off his clothes handsomely, and when he turned around, he saw Lauren immediately waiting with clean clothes. Seeing that Lauren sincerely apologized this time, Jason forgave Lauren. Lauren happily helped Jason tidy up his clothes, and Jason didn't refuse instead. He accepted the young master's service with a look of enjoyment. On the way home, Jason kept thinking about Lauren's attentive expression as he dressed himself. When he got home, he was still thinking about it. At this time, a call from Lauren brought Jason back to the real world. In order to ensure the quality of his own learning, Lauren asked Jason for live teaching. Such a good opportunity to increase money. Of course Jason will not let it go. So, the two started a video chat. Looking at the other side of the screen, Lauren read the words carefully. Jason felt that his heart was about to be cutie by Lauren, and a series of inexplicable fantasies appeared. Back to his senses, Jason realized that he was actually fascinated by Lauren. The next evening, Jason came to the library as scheduled. What was waiting for Jason was another thrilling temptation, even the posture of drinking water from Lauren revealed full sexiness. Fortunately, Jason is firm enough, otherwise he would have fallen. The study time starts, and Lauren adopts the posture of sitting on Jason's lap to study. This posture, not to mention whether Lauren can learn it, but Jason alone will definitely not be able to teach it. Sure enough, after a while, the two happily played the game. In the evening, Lauren asked for video learning again. Jason dressed up carefully and started teaching tonight. The two of them studied until very late, and fell asleep on the table without knowing it. The next day, Lauren woke up and saw that Jason was fast asleep. He immediately tidied himself up and continued to pretend to be asleep in front of the camera. When Jason woke up, what he saw was Lauren's delicate face sleeping peacefully. Jason was watching intently when Lauren suddenly opened his eyes, so scared that Jason immediately closed the computer, but he smirked in front of the computer. The relationship between the two has improved a lot. Jason can now accept all kinds of compliments from Lauren. While the two were chatting happily, Barnett S. Lone call came, and Jason S. face changed instantly. In order to ease the atmosphere, Lone decided to change the place and go to dinner with Jason. Today's food is very rich, instant noodles cooked by Jason himself. Lone ate very happily, but he didn't forget to tease Jason at the table. In the evening, Jason came to the bar to play. Lone saw him from behind and started his act again. Lewin pretended to be drunk and fell directly on top of Jason's friend. At this moment, Jason panicked, quickly changed seats, and took Lewin into his arms. Then, Lewin acted like a baby and said that he would go back with Jason. Seeing Lewin's unconscious face, Jason had no choice but to agree. Soon as the two went out, Lewin sat down on the ground and told Jason to carry him back. Jason had no choice but to hold Lewin in his arms. Lewin wrapped his arms around Jason's neck, pretending to be drunk and coaxing Jason into elation. Jason took Luan home and carefully placed Luan on the bed. When Jason was about to leave, Luan wanted to keep Jason and said a lot of sweet words, which made Jason hard to hold himself. Jason looked at Luan's lips close in front of his eyes and couldn't help but want to kiss them. Just when the distance was only one millimeter, Jason hesitated and thought twice and still placed the kiss on the forehead. Jason returned home. He was still immersed in the intimate interaction with Luan unable to extricate himself. It is true that love makes people stupid. The next day, Luan passed in front of Jason, and Jason's soul immediately followed Luan away. Luan came to the library, but because of his height, Luan couldn't reach the top book. Just as he was trying, a person easily helped Luan get it. That person, of course, is Jason. In the evening, Jason came to Luan's home for tutoring, but he was fascinated by Luan, and he readily agreed to Luan's request to cook noodles. 
After the noodles were cooked, Luan continued to send out lovely radio waves to Jason. Now, Jason decided to feed Luan himself. After a meal, the two of them blushed and their hearts beat. In other words, is it really good for the body? Jason left. He realized that he had forgotten an important thing and returned to Loan's residence. This trip hurt Jason a lot. He saw Loan sitting on the sofa, behaving intimately with a strange man. Jason felt that time stood still and his mind went blank after standing there for a while. He left lonely. After returning home, Jason was heartbroken and felt betrayed. Those good memories of the past have also become the existence that made his heart ache. The next day, Jason came to tutor Loan as usual. It's just that his mood is quite different from before. This was Jason's last class for Loan, but the two of them hardly communicated during the whole process. Loan didn't know what happened, but felt aggrieved. Although he was reluctant, he could only silently send Jason away. The next day, Jason, who had agreed to come and cheer for Loan, still came to the place where Loan was taking the exam involuntarily. But this time, Loan wasn't about to back down. Luan expressed his feelings to Jason, and Jason also told what he had misunderstood. It turned out that the man that night was Luan S. Sr., and he was helping the senior to rehearse a play. Moreover, in fact, Luan has fallen in love with Jason a long time ago, and even finding Jason as a tutor was a scheme arranged by Luan and Barnett together. Jason heard it, the corners of his mouth could not help but rise, which showed Jason's inner joy at this moment. In this way, the two became lovers logically and lived a variety of sweet lives. One night, the two watched the meteor shower together on the balcony and made a promise to love each other for the rest of their lives. A well-planned makeup lesson successfully allowed Luan to get Jason. However, I doubt that the previous bet could not have been lost, but Luan was behind the scenes. But no matter what, the relationship between them is real and their happiness is visible to the naked eye. Let us tell them to continue to be sweet together. Compared with the previous two stories, today's story is a little bit sad. It is a story about a playboy teasing the innocent brother Loan. However, the looks of the two are still very high, and the interaction is very sweet. Without further ado, let's get into today's story. The Drama Club has a new play to rehearse as a very qualified organizer. Gibson is enjoying the wonderful feeling of controlling the field. Loan, who has the temperament of a princess, came shyly with his smoke tool. The two joked for a while and the director appeared. When the director saw that the scene had been set up, but the actor hadn't arrived, he was suddenly unhappy. He grumbled to the staff angrily that the male lead was too ignorant. This impatient look made people feel that he was about to explode in the next second. The others didn't dare to say anything more. After all, no one dared to challenge the director's authority. After everyone waited anxiously, our handsome hero Tullius finally appeared. But the director performed a trick for everyone and his face changed instantly. Seeing the impatient director just now, he immediately became grinning. The other staff members have long been captivated by Tullius handsomeness and have no intention of complaining about him. After everyone is ready, today's drama rehearsal will officially begin. The gentle lights of the theater hit Tullius on the face, and Luan was stunned, and he forgot to put out the smoke. Then came the director's merciless reprimand, and Luan hurriedly apologized to Tullius nervously. Unexpectedly, instead of blaming him, Tullius comforted him gently. Now, Luan looked at Tullius with a few more beating red hearts in his eyes. After finishing his work, Luan was dragged and dragged to the bar by Gibson. Gibson was very comfortable listening to music and drinking in the bar, but Luan beside him was not so comfortable. Luan always disliked noisy situations, and when he was complaining to Gibson, Tullius came with his friends. Now Luan swept away the tiredness on his face and became interested in an instant. Luan has become shy due to Tullius' arrival, but what he doesn't know is that Tullius and his friends are also plotting how to take Luan down. Tullius made a bet with his friends that he would definitely win this innocent Luan within a week. As soon as he finished speaking here, Tullius began to act. Seeing Luan get up to go to the bathroom, Tullius followed. Luan became overwhelmed when he saw Tullius, 
but fortunately Tullius spoke first to ease the embarrassment between the two. Lewin also worked up his courage and asked Tullius a few questions. Being able to talk to Tullius like this, Lewin is already very satisfied. Unexpectedly, Tullius directly asked Lewin where he was going next, and even touched Lewin ambiguously. <laughs> actions and ambiguous words of Tullius made Lewin very happy by the way. He thanked Tullius for helping him out of trouble in the theater today. Then, he left the bathroom with a face full of shyness. After returning to the dormitory at night, Lewin was still reminiscing about Tullius' intimate behavior towards him. In this way, I'm afraid you won't be able to sleep tonight. If fate is coming, I can't stop it. The next day, Lewin ran into Tullius again in the elevator. Once in the elevator, Tullius slowly took Lewin's hand who was obsessed with Tullius charm, certainly wouldn't refuse. Then, the elevator broke down suddenly. Luan lost his footing and was hugged by Tullius. Then, the two waited for the elevator to be repaired in this ambiguous posture. <laughs> Fortunately, the elevator quickly stabilized. Otherwise, Lewin might suffocate in the temptation of Tullius. To reassure Lewin, Tullius squeezed his hand tightly. After the elevator was repaired, Tullius took Lewin to the bench in the square and found an excuse to lie on Lewin's lap. Lewin was fascinated by Tullius, so naturally Tullius could say anything. Not long after the two of them sat down, it started to rain. However, the rain did not affect the ambiguity between the two. For romance, Lewin and Tullius ran back to the dormitory in the rain. Tullius dormitory, of course. Lewin stood outside Tullius luxurious dormitory, bewildered. It was Tullius careful care that made him relax a lot. To prevent Lewin from catching a cold, Tullius brought him new clothes. Now, Lewin was hit by sweetness again. He stared at Tullius with big innocent eyes, enjoying Tullius warm embrace, and then quickly ran to the bathroom to take a shower. After Lewin came out of the shower, he saw Tullius seductive body standing in front of him. Lewin immediately blushed again not daring to meet Tullius' eyes. Seeing Luan's reaction, Tullius was very satisfied. It seemed that he was getting closer to his goal. Tullius settled Luan and went in to take a shower. Not long after entering, the alarm clock rang. Tullius asked Luan to help him turn off the alarm clock. Unexpectedly, this alarm clock was also arranged by him in advance. After Luan helped Tullius turn off the alarm clock, he was surprised to find that Tullius's wallpaper turned out to be his own which made Luan more sure that Tullius liked him. While they were having soup, Luan asked Tullius why he was so nice to him all of a sudden. Tullius naturally used a lot of sweet words to coax Luan into a dizzy state. Seeing that it was getting late, Luan said goodbye to Tullius shyly and left Tullius' apartment reluctantly. Back at the apartment, Luan told his roommate about his sweet inner feelings. But the roommate didn't quite agree with Tullius' view of love. The roommate told Luan about Tullius' romantic past and wanted Luan to learn from it. But that little smile showed that Lowen didn't take his roommate's words to heart. While rehearsing with the drama club the next day, Gibson noticed something was wrong with Lowen. Seeing the fresh look on Lowen's face towards Tullius, Gibson knew the kid was in trouble. Coincidentally, the heroine was not present for a long time today. In order not to delay the rehearsal progress, the director decided to let Lowen temporarily replace the heroine in rehearsal. During the rehearsal, perhaps the atmosphere was too good, Tullius couldn't help but kissed Lowen. The kiss made Luan overwhelmed and ran to the toilet. Seeing this, Tullius hurried over to apologize. But this time Luan was uncharacteristically angry with Tullius. Luan hid from Tullius for a day. In the evening, Tullius finally found Luan in a drink shop. At this time, Luan was still angry that Tullius had kissed him and didn't want to talk to Tullius. But Tullius was not angry and still took good care of Luan as usual. Luan, a soft-hearted person, was naturally coaxed by Tullius not long after. The two happily returned to the dormitory together. Downstairs in the dormitory, Luan got Tullius' contact information as he wished. This is another thing that makes Luan happy for several days. After saying goodnight to Luan, Tullius went to the bar with his friends. Originally, Tullius was kind to Luan only because of a bet between friends. But now, 
Tullius felt that his feelings for Luan were not as simple as he thought, was shocked after hearing Tullius' description. After all, the last time Tullius kissed was an ex whom he loved dearly. Tullius couldn't figure out what was going on in his heart, so he could only drink away his worries. The next day, Luan didn't see Tullius at the drama club, so he sent a message to Tullius to express his concern. After asking, I found out that Tullius was sick. Isn't this just a good opportunity for Luan to show his courtesy? Luan came to Tullius' house with medicine and food. Tullius opened the door to see who was coming. He pulled Luan into his arms and began to move. And Luan has been waiting for this moment for a long time. passion between the two came like this. Waking up the next day, Tullius excused that he had to go to class, and left the apartment early, leaving Luan in a daze staring at the ambiguous traces all over the room. Luan was still immersed in the happiness of last night, the doorbell rang, and Luan happily opened the door. But it was not the person he was waiting for outside the door, but a friend of Tullius. He told Luan that Tullius was sorry for what happened before, and he was commissioned by Tullius to say goodbye to Luan. แค่สะใจหลอกคนยิ่งฉันแล้วเดินภาพล้วงตาที่หลอกลอนฉันหรือไม่ was very sad after hearing this he didn't bother too much after packing up quickly he left Tullius' apartment and returned to his own dormitory Indeed, Luan still needs time to digest this hurt. Fortunately, Luan has two friends who are willing to accompany him. With the company of the two, Luan's mood slowly recovered, and a smile began to appear on his face. At this time, Tullius was not in a good mood. Luan left that day. Tullius realized belatedly that he fell in love with this innocent Luan. Tullius wants to get Luan back, but Luan doesn't want to trust him anymore. Tullius, who realized his mistake, could not complain to anyone, but could only bear it silently. After Gibson's earnest persuasion, Luan finally agreed to watch the play with him. The drama on the stage is very exciting, and the audience's reaction is even more exciting. The sleeping man on the stage became the prince played by Tullius, but the princess's kiss failed to wake him up. So, who is the princess's true love? Not surprisingly, Luan was selected. So, under the attention of everyone, Luan successfully woke up Tullius with a kiss. This is indeed the kiss of true love. It seems that Tullius has prepared carefully in order to recover Luan again. Tullius cried and begged Luan to give him another chance. Thinking of his previous experience, Luan chose to refuse. When Luan turned around and wanted to leave, the bits and pieces of himself and Tullius appeared in his mind again. His heart softened, he agreed to Tullius' request, and hugged Tullius sweetly, enjoying the sweetness of love. From then on, the prince and princess lived happily ever after, and Tullius kept pestering Luan all the time. Although there will still be unhappiness, the two will accommodate and tolerate each other, and even meet their parents through the screen. The sweet couple life of the two has just begun. This story tells us that it is better to keep love as pure as possible. Although Tullius had ulterior motives at first, in the end he relied on his pure and sincere heart to move Luan again. Let us wish them happiness forever, after all Luan deserves to be treated well. Today's story is a bit different, it is a wonderful love story between a man and a ghost, although it is absurd. The whole process is very sweet and warm. At the beginning of the picture, it is a mysterious and revealing some weird ceremony. Devout believers ask their own questions to the priest.
มึงจกผ่านได้ยังง่ายได้ A mysterious operation. Everyone got the guidance of God and happily left the place of worship. Everything looks very sacred, but the priest's laughter is a little scary. As soon as the students left, the priest showed his true colors. In fact, this priest is just an ordinary student in the acting department, and this set of magical operations is just for him to attract his classmates and make some money. Luan persuaded Gibson not to keep doing these deceitful things, but Gibson didn't take Luan's advice to heart. Loen, who was immersed in love and unable to extricate himself, must not escape Gibson's ridicule every day. No, Gibson said a few words and made Loen blush again. At night, members of the Puzzle Society came to Gibson. Recently, there was a bizarre case in the school, and they wanted to work with Gibson to use the power of God to see the development of this case. If they're successful, the puzzle community is sure to explode. Gibson was moved, and he even pulled on Loen, who was too timid. The mysterious ceremony began, and Lowen put his finger tremblingly under the chanting of Gibson's spell. The mysterious power began to appear. Gibson boldly asked the last question. A group of people were scared out of their wits by the answer of the mysterious force. <laughs> Coupled with the looming lights in the swimming pool, the group disappeared immediately. Since that day, Gibson has always had restless sleep and is always haunted by strange things. Until one day, a monk said to Gibson, "Someone will come to you, and your nightmare is about to end." What the monk said was so vague that Gibson's little head couldn't comprehend it. Gibson came to the school and told Lowen about his troubles, but it didn't take long for Lowen to tease Gibson. Combined with the words of the monk. This means that Gibson's destined man is coming, but Gibson really didn't think he had the potential to fall in love, and ruthlessly killed Luan's idea in the cradle. Luan saw the red bracelet on Gibson's hand and thought it looked good, so he asked a question. By the way, as a result, Gibson's words came out of his mouth. Luan was immediately moved when he heard that the bracelet had various effects on beauty and beauty. Seeing this, Gibson also promoted his new products. By the way, now. Luan's wallet CA and take it anymore. With Gibson's powerful deception ability, Luan was successfully let off the track. Luan gradually felt that the atmosphere around him was a bit weird, and he always felt that someone was staring at him. Gibson felt it too, but he didn't take it seriously. In the next few days, weird things and connections happened. สองคนไม่รับพี่สองสามไม่ได้ครับเอ้ยไอ้พวกนอนๆลุงนี้ได้ปะเนี่ย All those who have been in contact with Gibson said that there was a man in white with him. This frightened Gibson. He only felt a gust of wind behind him, but he really couldn't see the existence of other people. Things got interesting. Today, it was time for Gibson to pretend to be a priest to help his classmates. However, today's students are not very good. They don't believe Gibson's words. Gibson heard it. He became angry immediately, and the people outside were also very cooperative. The students quickly apologized and fled in all directions. Originally, Luan was still smiling and asking Gibson where he learned this powerful move. <laughs> But in the next second, he was frightened by the sound coming from nowhere. Dropped Gibson and went out the door. After returning to the dormitory at night, Gibson chanted sutras frantically under the quilt. He turned his head cautiously and was so frightened that he fell to the ground. Man in a white suit was standing by Gibson's bedside. Yes, he is a ghost, but this ghost is not scary and even a little cute. Ghost happily accosted Gibson and he wanted Gibson to help him. Gibson was still in shock, unable to extricate himself, so he agreed to Ghost's request in a daze. But Ghost himself didn't know what to ask Gibson to help him. He just looked after his soul and asked him to come to Gibson. Ghost's explanation carefully. Gibson finally understood that his life was not in danger for the time being, so he agreed to Ghost's request. Next, the two started a preliminary understanding, and one person and one ghost started a late-night conversation. This picture is unexpectedly, indescribably harmonious. It's been a while since Ghost came into the world, 
but he's only ever had one suit. The kind Gibson decided to bring Ghost to choose clothes, and after a while, Gibson gave Ghost a brand new image. Ghost was very happy, and excitedly said that he liked it. Gibson walked down the street and chatted cheerfully with Ghost, but in the eyes of others, Gibson is talking to himself all the way. Suddenly, Ghost told Gibson that someone was going to commit suicide. Gibson rushed to the river and saved the young life. After Gibson calmed down, he suddenly realized that Ghost had the ability to predict. Then, Gibson took Ghost to the library to test Ghost S's predictive ability. Ghost S's abilities didn't disappoint Gibson. It is also a joy to have someone around you who has special skills. With Ghost as a right-hand man, Gibson S's fortune-telling career has opened a new chapter. It's time to pretend to be a priest again today. Gibson is very confident and assured Lewin of the accuracy of his fortune-telling. Lewin asked Gibson why, but Gibson pretended to be mysterious and didn't tell him. Lewin, the fortune-telling began. Gibson provocatively and asked himself what he did yesterday. With Ghost's help, Gibson quickly revealed the boy's actions last night. For the next few people, Gibson answered their questions with ease. Everyone saw that the fortune-telling was so accurate, and they believed even more that the person in front of them was a real priest, and their hearts became more pious. After the crowd dispersed, Lewin finally asked the truth from Gibson. But Lewin's trembling limbs told us that he didn't want to know the truth. Lewin, who was too scared to speak, Gibson came back to reward Ghost for his performance today. But he forgot that the Ghost has no body, and Gibson excitedly wanted to hold Ghost's hand, but it was in vain. With Ghost's company, Gibson's sleep became much more peaceful. At this time, Gibson was immersed in dreamland. In the dream, he was surrounded by two people, and he was about to be beaten. At this moment, Ghost stepped forward and protected Gibson behind him. Seeing that they had lost their advantage, the two left after uttering a harsh word. But at this time, Gibson's attention was no longer on Ghost's heroic rescue of the beauty, but he found that he could meet Ghost. In other words, in the dream, Ghost has a physical body. Seeing Gibson so happy, Ghost was also very happy. Then, Ghost brought Gibson to Ghost's world. Holding hands, hugging, and all the intimacy the two can do. In reality, Gibson was also grinning from ear to ear, having a good night's dream. When Gibson woke up the next day, he saw Ghost sitting on the head of the bed, looking down to kiss himself. Gibson smiled and sat up, with a sweet expression on his face. He looked embarrassed at Ghost. When the two came to the classroom, Ghost suddenly talked about the cause of his death. But because of memory problems, he can only remember a little bit. Gibson didn't force him either. After all, it's fine for Ghost to be with him like this. Gibson and Ghost chatted very enthusiastically. However, in the eyes of the students, the picture of Gibson talking to himself is a bit weird. This scene happened to be seen by Lohan. Lohan pretended to be calm and reminded Gibson that talking to himself was not very good. Only then did Gibson realize that his behavior might have scared the people around him. <laughs> At night, the two met again in their dreams. Gibson lay easily in Ghost's arms, saying that he wanted to go on like this with Ghost forever. But after thinking briefly, Ghost told Gibson that his time with him was running out. Hearing this answer, Gibson was momentarily disappointed, but quickly adjusted. Since the time together is very short, it can't be wasted. Before Ghost could react, Gibson kissed him. Seeing that Gibson was so active, Ghost couldn't hold back anymore, and he was just a promiscuous kiss to Gibson. It was a good night. Gibson woke up the next day. Ghost had prepared breakfast. With Gibson for a long time, Ghost also became cunning. This breakfast, Gibson is quite satisfied. When we came to the school, everyone looked at Gibson with strange eyes. The appearance of everyone's discussion was also seen by Gibson. Gibson's mind went blank, and he just felt that he was treated as a monster by his classmates and he felt very uncomfortable. Ghost patiently asked what happened, but was overwhelmed by Gibson's angry yelling. By the time Gibson figured it out, Ghost had been wrong for several days. Gibson looks for Ghost everywhere, but Ghost is unwilling to show up. Finally, Gibson came to the world of Ghost. The two just met here. Gibson hugged Ghost tightly, 
apologizing for his behavior. Ghost told Gibson with a complicated expression that he was here to say goodbye this time, and his time had come. Gibson burst into tears, but this time, Ghost is really leaving. I'm going to go back. 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 คือมันหมดเวลาของเราแล้วอ่ะเราบอกเธอได้เท่านี้จริงๆจากนี้ไปอ่ะดูแลตัวเองด้วยนะ After giving Gibson an affectionate kiss, Ghost left, leaving only Gibson to collapse on the spot. Since then, Gibson has often waited for Ghost in his dreams. Until one day, Gibson met a man who looked exactly like Ghost on a certain bridge, but the people in front of them have already forgotten the memories between them. Under Gibson's anxious inquiry, the other party remembered Gibson's name, and only one name made Gibson sure that it was Ghost. A few days passed, although Ghost still didn't remember what happened between them, but he already knew that the fate of the two had already been tied together. He agreed to Gibson's confession, and a sweet relationship began like this. Fortunately, Ghost came back in the end, otherwise Gibson would be too pitiful. It seems that everything has a destiny in the dark, although I don't know why Ghost died and why he died and came back to life, but it was this wonderful experience that led to the acquaintance, mutual acquaintance, and love between the two, which made this world another sweet couple. Today's story is more exciting. It is a competition between two playboys in the game world. The process can be described as quite tortuous. Without further ado, let's quickly take a look at what will happen between the two playboys. A very attractive playboy, Farina attracts many admirers even when she is acting as a substitute. However, the other party is a child after all, and Farina still has her own bottom line. After the child left, Farina received calls from lovers, one after another. From the proficiency of Farina's response, it can be said that he is quite experienced. In the evening, Farina and her friends had a great time in the bar. It was late at night soon, and all the friends went home one by one, and only Farina felt unsatisfied. Just when Farina was feeling lonely, Brock showed up. With his unique charm, he seduced Farina, and his every move touched Farina's nerves. Soon, the two appeared on the bed of Brock's house, and they had a passionate night. Brock is definitely a qualified college student after finishing his work. He immediately got up to catch up with homework. The teacher couldn't help but praise him for his hard work. However, even though Brock was studying hard, he didn't forget to tease Farina a few words. Farina smiled shyly for a while, as if thinking of something. He asked Brock with a worried face if the relationship between the two would be at risk of being leaked. After all, underground relationships are the most tormenting. Brock turned his head to look at Farina's serious face and gave Farina a detailed analysis of the reasons that he would never reveal. Only then did Farina's face relax. Young people are full of energy when Farina just woke up. She saw Brock touching her with a look of unsatisfactory expression on her face. Fortunately, Farina held on, otherwise it would have been difficult to walk normally this day. Farina has a new colleague in her office. Seeing Barnett for the first time, Farina had a feeling of lightening up. Barnett is handsome and gentle, and Farina feels that she has another target. On this day, Barnett was printing materials, but the printer failed unexpectedly. After trying many methods to no avail, Barnett had to ask Farina for help. Farina, who finally got the chance, must of course perform well. Trying to fix the printer, Farina accidentally smeared ink on her face. While urging Farina to wash her face, Barnett thought Farina was so cute. As a result, Farina took a shower, but it was still not clean. Barnett had to help Farina wipe off the ink marks on his face himself. Farina got home. She was obsessed with Barnett's photos. Even my roommates couldn't stand that look. Just as Farina was immersed in Barnett's beauty and couldn't extricate herself, Brock's call came. Farina hung up on Brock impatiently, ignored Brock's plea, and went to sleep with a displeased face. However, how could Brock give up so easily? Farina's roommate asks her boyfriend to sleep with her, and doesn't that create the perfect opportunity for the two? Brock quietly climbed onto Farina's bed in the middle of the night and Farina couldn't hold back her teasing, and the two had another night of passion. The next day, Farina finishes class, and Brock wants to ask Farina to go to the movies together. 
Farina declined without thinking. After hanging up the phone, Farina looked at Barnett walking towards her with a smile on her face. This face-changing speed is really fast. The two chatted with each other for a while, and Barnett asked Farina to have dinner together. Farina would not refuse Barnett's invitation, and went to the appointment happily. On Brock's side, he looked depressed, thinking of his relationship with Farina that hadn't progressed. He was worried for a while. Originally, this relationship was already in jeopardy, but now that there is another rival in love, when will the relationship between me and Farina take a step forward? But it's understandable that Farina is obsessed with Barnett after all. No one can control a person who can do so many tricks even for a meal. The roommate found out that Farina was very indifferent to Brock during this time, trying to figure out what happened between the two. Farina shyly told her roommate that she seemed to be in love with Barnett. Brock would be heartbroken if he heard that. Before class the next day, several couples stayed together in various sweet poses, but their eyes stayed on Brock and Farina at the same time. From the moment they entered the door, the two were replying to messages at the same time, regardless of what other people were saying. Friends asked the two if they were texting behind their backs, and both immediately denied it. However, judging by the reactions of my friends, I naturally don't believe this set of rhetoric. As for what the two were talking about, it was naturally about how to spend this beautiful night tonight. Farina came to Brock's house on time, and Brock's beauty tonight was intoxicating. A new day has begun, and Farina is leaning on the railing in a daze when she suddenly sees Barnett passing by. He immediately greeted Barnett happily, and blew a kiss to express how much he misses Barnett. Barnett smiled sheepishly and left. After Barnett finished class, Farina came to have dinner with him. Just then, Brock appeared. Brock to let these two people live together, he acted like a baby to Barnett. How could Barnett withstand Brock's offensive? So he immediately agreed. In this case, Farina can only agree. Three people happily eat barbecue hot pot together. During this period, Brock kept hinting to Barnett with various small gestures that Farina was his, but Farina kept refusing to deny it. Seeing Farina's impatient expression, Barnett defined their relationship. After dinner, Barnett gave Farina his phone number. Finally got the contact information she had been looking forward to for a long time, and Farina couldn't hide her joy. Seeing his excited expression, Brock standing behind him was very depressed almost writing the words, I'm jealous on his face. After getting in the car, Farina was still giggling at the contact information. Brock finally couldn't take it anymore, grabbed Farina's cell phone and asked Farina to go back to sleep with him tonight. How could Farina, who was preoccupied with Barnett now, agree to Brock's request? Farina wants to go back as soon as possible now, and then call Barnett. Seeing that Farina didn't agree with him, Brock kissed him. Only this time, no matter what method Brock uses, Farina is indifferent. Seeing Farina's reaction, tears rolled down Brock's eyes, and finally he sent Farina home. After returning home, Farina immediately called Barnett, and the two chatted very happily. At the end, they also made a movie appointment by the way. The roommate heard Farina's chat content, and the soul of gossip was burning it seemed that Barnett and Farina were very likely. When she came to the classroom the next day, Farina was still immersed in the conversation with Barnett, unable to extricate herself. This sweet look made my friends envious. But when she saw Brock coming in, Farina immediately stopped smiling. Without saying a few words, he got up and left the classroom. Brock watched the back of Farina leaving, and was in a daze for a while, before returning to reality under the comfort of his friends. Brock has feelings for Farina, except Farina herself. Farina came to see Barnett, and offered all kinds of courtesies, serving tea and water, and giving words of encouragement. Everything was good. Barnett couldn't help laughing at Farina's behavior. After work, Barnett and Farina went shopping hand in hand. The two didn't notice that Brock was watching their every move from behind. A few weeks later, Brock got a message from Farina. Looking at the familiar contacts, Brock recalled the last time the two met. Farina told Brock that she wanted to end the relationship between the two because Farina wanted to pursue Barnett wholeheartedly. It's time for this dysfunctional relationship to end. Brock hesitantly agrees to Farina but he makes an agreement with Farina that when he decides to confess his love, he must tell Brock in advance. That way, Brock can prepare himself mentally. Eventually the day came, and Brock invited Farina to have a candlelight dinner as a farewell dinner. Although Brock was already mentally prepared, 
Brock couldn't help but feel heartbroken when Farina said she wanted to confess her love to someone else. Brock makes one last request to Farina, hoping that Farina and Brock can act as a couple tonight. As long as he is with Farina, even if it is a performance, Brock is content. Brock crying like rain, Farina couldn't bear to refuse, so she agreed to Brock's request. They had a night of passion. When he woke up the next day, Brock found that the people around him had already left. Looking at the empty side, Brock was very lonely. He hugged the pillow where Farina had been and cried. After last night, Farina seems to have figured something out. He came to Barnet today, not to confess to him, but to say goodbye to him. Seeing Farina's determined face, Barnet understood that Farina finally recognized her heart and knew what her real choice was. Barnet is very happy for Farina and encourages Farina to find her sweetheart as soon as possible. At this time, Farina's sweetheart, Brock, was sitting on a chair, looking into the distance in a daze. Sitting behind Brock, Farina kept asking if the only Brock mentioned was herself. Under Farina's persistent questioning, Brock had to admit it. Then, Brock heard Farina confess to himself. The eyes of this person who thought he had failed in his secret love rekindled. The two who used to play games in the world to save each other finally went ashore hand in hand. This may be the meaning of love once you meet the right person, even a playboy will stop for the person in his heart. I believe that after going through these ups and downs, the two will cherish each other and the time together even more. This is a time travel story. The hero accidentally time travels to the age of 18 and then travels back to save his love story. At the beginning of the story, a well-made Gundam chest is shining. What it doesn't know is that its owner is going through the most painful moment of his life. Green cried and said to Harris that he hoped that he could regain this Gundam that was very important to him. And Harris has long been distressed because of Green S crying and agreed to Green S request without hesitation. So, what's going on between these two? The story begins when the two were young. Harris and Green are very good friends and are inseparable every day. As a man of the school, Luan has always been the object of Green's admiration. Even though Luan is not friendly to Green and often speaks ill at each other, Green still firmly wants to join them. Harris sent it on Green and appeared by Green's side every day. One day, Harris happily gave Green the Gundam he had just made, and told Green what is special about this Gundam. If you make a serious wish to its heart, then this wish will definitely come true. Hearing this, Green ran away and immediately came to Luan to make a wish to join them. Luan hypocritically stated that if Green and Harris broke up, they would agree to Green as joining. The naive Green did so, but the result was that he not only attracted Luan as ridicule, but also lost his best friend. On the way home, Green thought sadly that he could just go straight to 18 and be the most popular guy in school. Green didn't notice the car speeding towards him. Green woke up on the lap of a strange man, which startled him. Green hurried to the mirror, but was shocked by the handsome young man in the mirror. I really came to the age of 18, and the strange man just now was Green's childhood idol Luan. After accepting this fact, Green immediately came to Harris, and at this time Harris also became a sunny and handsome boy. Green hugged Harris excitedly. This is really a reunion after a long absence. As soon as he arrived at Harris' house, Green was hungry. Harris was bringing Green a sandwich. The two had a cheek-to-cheek -cheek intimate contact, and the atmosphere suddenly became ambiguous. Green, who can't remember anything, listened to Harris tell about his life in the past seven years. It was really exciting. All the wishes I made when I was a child came true. But before Green was happy, Harris told him that the two of them were not friends long ago. However, now that Green has come to him, Harris doesn't mind it. Of Harris's house, Green came to the bar he used to frequent. Green is now open to all comers. It seems that under Luan's leadership, Green has also begun to learn bad things. It's just that the current Green couldn't bear this kind of stimulation, so he ran out and called Harris. The next second, Green appeared at Harris' home. Green and Harris poured out their troubles, but it didn't take long for Green's troubles to be dispelled by Harris. Green, who was in a better mood, immediately started gossiping, asking Harris about his relationship status. After hearing that Harris has been single, Green's eyes lit up, and the little joy in his heart could hardly be suppressed. Finding out Harris' emotional state, Green invited Harris to take a bath together, and even called it, go back to the past and play like a child. The two talked and hugged each other. A thunderclap made Green jump directly into Harris' arms. Then, taking advantage of the situation, Green kissed Harris. Green, please be more reserved. Harris, who was stolen, 
was immersed in the sweetness and couldn't extricate himself. As soon as he returned to the bedroom, he found that Green was already lying on the bed waiting for him. Green lay in Harris' arms, took the opportunity to sneak kiss a few more times, and then fell asleep with a sweet smile. At this time, Green, who was about to sleep, heard the thunder again and subconsciously went to hug Harris. But realizing that his sudden movement might wake Harris, Green's hand stopped in midair again. Harris, who was asleep, seemed to realize something and took Green's hand and put it on his waist. Then, he took Green's hand all the way down to an unspeakable part. up the next day. It feels like everything last night was a dream. Harris beside him got up early to prepare breakfast for the two of them. Green squeezed his hands and feet to come to Harris' side. Feeling Green's movements, Harris was also shy. In order to ease the awkward atmosphere between the two, Harris took the initiative to have a dispensable chat. Fortunately, Harris moved quickly enough, and the delicious breakfast ended the awkward conversation between the two. Looking at the top of Green's furry head, that a bee and eating look was so cute that Harris touched his head unconsciously. After the sweet breakfast, Harris took Green to see his well-prepared surprise. Yes, you read that right, just a bubblegum. A sly smile appeared on Green's face after receiving the surprise. He's going to compete with Harris in blowing bubblegum. If Harris is Green's best friend, he doesn't think Green is naive at all. The Bibi, the two sat on the sofa, blowing bubbles solemnly. Green wasn't in good shape today and he didn't blow a single bubble. The two were playing happily, and suddenly, Green looked at Harris in the wrong way. Green pushed Harris down on the sofa, thinking that Green was going to take the initiative, but Green just wanted to ask why the two broke up in the first place. Harris finished talking about the original story in a flat tone. Although Harris looked calm, Green still felt very guilty. The previous sweet and relaxed atmosphere dissipated in an instant, and Green ignored Harris' persuasion, got up and left. Green's recent outliers have left his players unsatisfied. One day, Green heard them talking about him outside the door, and he heard them clearly. It turned out that they never regarded themselves as friends. Listening to the players' malicious comments on him, think about Harris' sincerity towards him. In contrast, it seems that his original choice was a big mistake. In order to relieve his sadness for the past two days, Green decided to go home and relax. Green recalled the scene when he just got Gundam and acted like a baby with his father when he was a child. Then, getting along with the Sher family is really easy. As soon as you step into the yard, childhood memories come rushing to your face. Thinking of his mischievous self as a child, Green's mood improved a lot. The mother who came to answer the door was very pleasantly surprised, because Green hadn't been home for a long time. Green stepped forward and hugged his mother tightly, apologizing for his ignorance over the years. The family sat at the dining table happily and played, and Dad Green was still as funny as before. When her mother asked Green how it felt to be 18, Green fell silent. The real 18-year-old is not as beautiful as I imagined. Green told his parents that he wants to go back to his childhood now, and there are too many troubles now. The parents smiled knowingly and didn't say much. Immediately afterwards, the family began to enjoy the food happily. While eating, Green thought about the things he had experienced during this period and it seemed that not all were bad, those interesting things were just ignored by him on purpose. Actually, it's pretty good now. Seeing the happy parents, Green instantly felt relieved. Green came back from home. He ran directly to the swimming pool where Harris often goes. Long time no see. Green misses Harris so much. The two sat by the pool and chatted. Harris looked at Green's sunny face with a smile, and couldn't get back to his senses for a long time. Then, Green clings to Harris, holding Harris tightly as if he wants to bring back the hug he missed for seven years at once. Fortunately, Green was hungry, otherwise I don't know how long he would have hugged him. Fortunately, Harris had already prepared and brought the food prepared in advance to Green, and then the two began to play and play with water. Accidentally, Harris got sauce on his face. Green stood up and wanted to wipe Harris off with his face. Regardless of whether this action can be wiped clean, anyway, the ambiguity value has reached its peak. Harris followed suit and kissed Green on the mouth. Just as Harris was about to make the next move, 
Green shyly ran away. It was Valentine's Day in a blink of an eye, and Green made an appointment with Harris to meet at night, and wanted to express his love to Harris. As night fell, the two sat in the woods, very comfortable. But when Harris said he was going to see her boyfriend later, Green panicked and his mind went blank. Just in the morning, Harris just accepted the senior's confession. Green was very sad. He still chose to bless. Both of them felt uncomfortable, so the scene at the beginning of this issue appeared. After leaving, Green was very sad, crying on the road holding the lost and recovered Gundam. Danger came when a truck hit Green as he did when he was 11 years old. When Green woke up, he was 11 again. This time, he didn't drive Harris away, but grew up with Harris smoothly. In a blink of an eye, the two grew up, and it was Valentine's Day again. Harris arranged a romantic venue for Green and promised Green that he would love him forever. This Valentine's Day is finally Valentine's Day for the two of them. With the help of Gundam, the two handsome guys finally got married. This story tells us that not everything is the best the person you don't cherish now may be the one you want after many years. Let us start today, from the moment, to cherish the people in front of us and the ones we love. This is a sad story, one who misses his former lover with all his energy, and one who keeps silent and has been with him for many years. In the end, what kind of wonderful story will happen between the two? Let's take a look. The moving music is mellow and elegant, with a hint of sadness, and Alexandra gracefully appeared in this slightly depressing atmosphere. In the next second, the serious Alexandra changed into a casual outfit, and her demeanor became much gentler in an instant. Alexandra was riding a bicycle, carrying flowers, and slowly approached a girl. Don't get me wrong, Alexandra is the delivery person of the love station, just a love tool. After the task is completed, Alexandra reports the work progress to Barnett. Barnett's mouth had been twitching ever since he got the call from Alexandra. It seems that it is not easy between the two. After completing the task, Alexandra sent care to the Uncle Helmold who was wandering on the street, and he went back to the store after going around. With Valentine's Day approaching, Barnett S. Florist is short on staff. The only clerk also fell in love this year and had to accompany his partner. Alexandra S. Free labor is not in vain. In order to improve the performance of the store, Barnett created several new packaging methods. But for some reason, the little clerk couldn't learn no matter how he was taught. Just when the clerk was complaining, Alexandra appeared. Now, the little clerk was relieved. Alexandra was a quick learner, and it didn't take long to pick it up. The hands of the two touched each other inadvertently, and in an instant, their attention was shifted from the packaging to the hands. Barnett laughed for a moment before taking his hand away. The next day, Alexandra ran into Barnett on the road, and was called away by Barnett to pick things up together. Then, the two came to the cinema. Alexandra looked at a loss. What should I pick at the cinema? Regardless of Alexandra S. doubts, Barnett chatted with Alexandra. Suddenly, the theater's fire siren rang, and everyone left in panic. Only Alexandra looked at the burning fire and didn't know what to think. <laughs> Thanks to Barnett bringing him back to reality, the two left. After returning home, Alexandra was distraught, staring at the movie tickets in her mobile phone in a daze. There are many pictures of getting along with the ex-boyfriend in my mind. At this moment, a knock on the door interrupted Alexandra S. sadness. Green next door invited him to a dinner together. At Green S. request to act like a baby together, Alexandra agreed. Alexandra, whom they hadn't seen for a long time, but Farina accidentally slipped her mouth, which made the originally happy dining atmosphere suddenly depressing. No matter how much everyone finds topics to chat with, Alexandra is not interested. Alexandra left. Uninformed gossip people asked Farina what happened to Alexandra. After some hesitation, Farina told everyone about Alexandra S. experience. Once, Alexandra had a boyfriend, Haim, whom she loved deeply. The two had made an appointment to go to the movies together, but Alexandra was delayed because of something. Coincidentally, the theater caught fire that day, and Haim died in the raging fire. Since then, Alexandra has been living with guilt. He felt that if he had been on time for his appointment, Haim might still be alive and well. It was also because of Haim's death that Alexandra no longer believed in miracles. After listening to Farina S. description, everyone expressed sympathy for Alexandra S. experience and felt sorry for these two lovers, 
who were separated forever. Alexandra, who was scarred again, was in a very bad mood. So, he decided to come to Helmold, a bosom beggar, to confide his troubles. Helmold listened quietly. This was another young man trapped in love. Helmold didn't say too many words of consolation, but handed him the lucky necklace he was carrying with him and told Alexandra, you still have to believe in miracles. What if they happen to you someday? After talking with Helmold, Alexandra felt much better and went to Hymas' grave with her friends to mourn. Alexandra told her friends about Hymas' warm boyfriend. When the two dated for the first time at the cinema, Hyme prepared many romantic surprises for Alexandra, as well as romantic confessions, and the two began a sweet relationship. Only now, all happiness came to an abrupt end with Hymas' departure. Alexandra hasn't been happy for a long time either. After returning from the cemetery, Alexandra became distracted all day long. Seeing him like this made Barnett's heart ache. In order to ease Alexandra's emotions, Barnett brought Alexandra to a family dinner. Are you meeting your parents now? Barnett's speed is really fast. Barnett's family are lovely and warm to Alexandra. In such an atmosphere, Alexandra's sad emotions were washed away a lot. On the way Barnett sent Alexandra back, Barnett hoped that Alexandra would stop being immersed in the sorrow of the past and look forward. No matter what, Barnett would be by Alexandra's side. Alexandra didn't hear any other emotion from Barnett's words, only that Barnett was comforting herself. It seems that Barnett's road to love has a long way to go. After returning home, Alexandra stared at the bracelet Helmold gave her in a daze, wondering when a miracle would be her turn. While sleeping soundly in the middle of the night, Alexandra suddenly became restless. In the dream, Alexandra finally saw the heim she was thinking of it was the movie theater that Alexandra didn't have time to go to that day. Helmold woke up from the dream and couldn't sleep again. At dawn the next day, he went out into the streets to find Helmold. After last night's dream, Alexandra firmly believed that Helmold was the one who could bring her miracles. Alexandra begged Helmold to take her back in time so she could save Heim. Helmold was tortured by Alexandra and agreed to Alexandra's request. With the help of Helmold, Alexandra returned to the day of the incident smoothly. This time, Alexandra didn't break the appointment, and from the moment he received the call from Heim, he ran to the theater in a hurry. Alexandra embraced Heim excitedly, longing for that hug. But Alexandra didn't yearn for the warmth in her arms. She pulled Heim and walked out. Not knowing why, Heim advised Alexandra to calm down a bit. It's not good to disturb others. Between the two of them, the alarm bell rang. The appearance of Alexandra did not change the direction of the story, and Heim still chose to sacrifice himself to save the mother and child next to him. When Alexandra came back to her senses, Helmold had already disappeared. Alexandra walked on the street in a daze. When walking on a bridge, Alexandra remembered the past between herself and Heim. Longing for the happy fight and now being alone made Alexandra's thoughts even deeper. When Alexandra came home, looking at Heim's photo, she came to the top of the building by a strange coincidence. Someone here has been waiting for Alexandra for a long time. Seeing the familiar Heim, Alexandra hugged the person in front of her tightly. But Heim had come to say goodbye to Alexandra formally. Heim had passed away and he didn't want Alexandra to dwell on the grief of the past. Heim loves Alexandra very much, but since he can no longer give Alexandra happiness, let others give Alexandra perfect love. Heim told Alexandra, don't feel guilty, everything is predestined. Alexandra had been crying for a long time. He looked at Heim speechless. By the time Alexandra woke up from the floor, Heim had disappeared. Alexandra came to the beach, looked at the stars in the sky, thought about what Heim said, and tried to reconcile with herself. Just then, Barnett walked slowly towards Alexandra. Today is a pretty big day for Barnett. After a long period of mental construction, Barnett finally decided to confess his love to Alexandra. Barnett confided in Alexandra that he would try his best to take care of Alexandra like Heim, and not let Alexandra be immersed in pain all day long. Looking at the person in front of her who made a solemn promise to herself, and thinking of Heim's instructions to herself, Alexandra felt that perhaps it was time to give herself a chance to start a new life. Alexandra agreed to Barnett's confession. Thousands of stars in the sky witnessed the birth of another couple. Soon after, Barnett and Alexandra came to Heim's grave together. Barnett knew that it would not be easy for Alexandra to let go of Heim, so Barnett was willing to give Alexandra time to heal the wound in his heart slowly. Barnett is also very grateful to Heim, because the little boy Heim desperately saved that day was Barnett's nephew. Heim is the big hero of the Barnett family. While speaking, 
Barnett's nephew also came to the cemetery to mourn Heim. All is well in heaven tonight, Heim. Barnett really fulfilled his promise in life and missed Heim with Alexandra. When eating, Barnett will also prepare an extra pair of bowls and chopsticks for Heim. Alexandra was touched to see how much Barnett cared about her feelings. From the very beginning of their relationship, the two had very little intimacy even when they slept together. Barnett had to make the floor. Of course, this was all Barnett's idea. After all, Alexandra's love for Heim prevented Barnett from rushing. After getting along for so long, Alexandra gradually accepted this person who was always cautious in front of her. With Heim's help, the two finally managed to sleep on the same bed. Barnett held Alexandra tenderly, and since then the sweet love between the two has officially arrived. There are many regrettable things in the world. Some people regret it all their lives, but in fact, some things are destined by God. Since it cannot be changed, it is better to choose to look forward. Maybe you will find a new world. After reading all the love stories, which one is your favorite? Why Destiny? It's all over here. Thank you for your likes. See you next time.